but somehow I think some organizations still have troubles really embracing that sharing spirit. And our speaker today, Sandra Soares, continues that thought a little bit, specifically the borrowing part, um, because she really wants to encourage universities to share much more of their approaches, their research around learning. And um, she's involved in a very interesting project um, called Erasmus Plus Project, uh, an Erasmus Pro Plus Project called CoLab, um, where it's about launching a digital hub that brings together um, teachers around the world, around Europe and beyond, uh, that involves more than five partner universities across Europe. And she's here to present it. Welcome, Sandra. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank and you for the invitation. To complete the European spirit, yesterday we had a speaker from Russia, from Estonia. Today we're going to the other end of Europe, <laughs> literally the other end, because you're actually from Portugal. I am. Uh, where you are the pro-rector at the University of Aveiro. So thanks for joining us today. Also, thanks for flying in. Looking forward to your talk. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. I can tell it's after lunch in German. Uh, it wouldn't be in Portugal, but it is in German. So it's a pleasure to be here. I come from Portugal, which you may know from um, because of the sun of the beach and because of Ronaldo, probably. I come from the University of Aveiro, and I will talk to you about the value of sharing in higher education, and specifically in its core mission of learning and teaching, and how I foresee uh, sharing as a key driver, transformative driver in this uh, context. So uh, last year, in the year of 2020, uh, we human beings were uh, under attack. And we were under attack by a tiny, tiny little creature called coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, which threatened our survival as a species, right? So the way to be safe in a safe environment and make it um, was to stay at home, right? To, to stop our daily activities, our routines, our work, our job. So s suddenly and remarkably, uh, the world was empty. The streets were empty. But also remarkably, our screens at homes were full of people. Because one thing that did not stop throughout these times were, was education. And education is a vital part of our lives, and not only when we are uh, at university, but also beyond, right? Lifelong learning is, is quite relevant, especially nowadays. A lot of discussion is uh, going on on bringing life learners to the university. So uh, we human beings are very good at adapting ourselves to different environments. Uh, and this was not an exception. So throughout our evolution, we have evolved to solve problems, to be creative, to have innovative solutions for different types of problems, life-threatening or not. And one of the key drivers in having these big brains we have right now, compared to other species, is that we at some point uh, learned that living in a community was, was the driver to capitalize on our uh, different ef efforts to adapt to the, the, the environment. And because of that, we had more space to process information, to be creative, to think, to uh, regulate emotions, uh, to all of these executive functions that the frontal cortex, our prefrontal cortex in particular, uh, makes us so unique and make us able to do all these things compared to other species. So our adaptability uh, as humans was, was again demonstrated uh, throughout this period. So one of the things that happened during this crisis was that not only we tested and tested and tested for SASHCOV-2, but we also tried new ways and tested new ways of learning and teaching. So we were forced to move on to a, an online environment in teaching and learning. Uh, many of the students and of the teachers were never uh, exposed to this type of environment, so it was the first time, and we did it rapidly. Uh, 
first in, a, in an em emergency way, but then uh, with higher quality uh, 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 all over the time. So uh, we also, uh, one of the things we tried to do was to test new ways to, to get the students engaged uh, in this online environments uh, and still have them uh, thinking critically, being innovative and trying to uh, solve problems, right? So one important thing that happened throughout this time was that learning and teaching was again at the center of the discussion in higher education. And it's, it's really a center, central piece of the mission of universities to uh, give competences and skills to active and responsible uh, learners who, will be, uh, who are citizens, of course. Another thing that happened was this massive reliance and experience while using digital tools. And digital tools are a way, should be a way to improve our learning and teaching, the way we teach in particular. Uh, so it's not the way, it's one way to uh, improve it. And, and something amazing, amazing happened, which was not only learning and teaching was at the center of the discussions, but also there was this massive reliance of teachers in going to seminars, workshops, all over the world using digital tools. So this was really impressive. It brought us together and we started to share more than ever. And as someone mentioned earlier, on, it is the case that learning and teaching, teaching in particular, it's quite a solitary task and is not as much regarded as research in our universities. So we need to change this paradigm. We should use this as an opportunity to be in the forefront of getting teaching the recognition it deserves. And in fact, universities should be at the forefront of uh, planning the unknown, creating solutions, innovations, um, and, and, and so we have this important role here in transforming uh, society. So we should view and use this massive experience in testing new ways of learning and getting the students engaged and having teaching with a, the, a focus in the student-centered approach as a way to change things at universities. So we know that the future is uncertain, but we can make predictions, visions on what should be coming and how can we adapt. And there is this important document by the European University Association that envisions the future of universities as being universities without walls, open, transformative, and transnational. And that bring to get, brings together the virtual and the, the presence, the face-to-face -face environments in the best possible way. So the fa in fact, the world has changed and so has higher education. And it is a reality that new learners are expected at universities. So not only the traditional students, but like lifelong learners who want to have uh, uh, a small uh, uh, learning experiences. Um, they also have different goals and different needs and the, the professors, the teachers need to adapt rap rapidly to this. So it is very important that we get together, open the borders, so break the walls and cooperate in this very important mission we have ahead. So it's, it's of course, uh, this approach of, of um, educating uh, active and responsible citizens uh, means that we need to learn to teach in, in different ways. We need to know how to combine hybrid with face-to-face -face environments. As I was saying, interdisciplinary approach are, of course, more than ever, the fuel of innovation and should be accounted for. And uh, as you know, there is this um, uh, European uh, education area which is being built and the European Universities Initiative is one way to make it happen. And I will talk about one specific, uh, specific example because I want to be try to be concrete here. And I, I, I would like to talk to you about the ECIU case. So it's the European Consortium of Innovative Universities. It was born in 1997. And we went together for this European initiative um, uh, by the European Commission when we were succeeded. And uh, we have uh, universities from the north, 
uh, center in, in south of Europe. And the idea of the, the European, the, the university, ECIU University, is that we learners will solve, together solve challenges of, uh, real life challenges, challenges of the society and bring them back to the society. So the idea is that there is this permanent dialogue between the universities which have do not, should not have walls with the society, with the industry, with the ONGs and so on. And we need to, to train our teachers to teach in such a way uh, and there are proper methodologies to do so, so that they are able to do so. And in fact, this project is, is aligned with the SDG 11 in particular, but the idea is that this idea of solving real life challenges uh, within universities and cooperate with the society. So new pedagogies for new times are very much needed. They, and in fact, teachers are at the center of education. Of course, learners and uh, learners are, are the key, but teachers need to be prepared to provide them with the best possible experiences. So uh, we need to high level uh, the, the quality of the teaching provided by the different teachers at the different universities and institutions have must provide continuous professional support for uh, their teachers. So to be concrete again, I will uh, tell you a bit about uh, uh, the case of the University of Aveiro and the different pedagogical activities we have launched since um, 2018. So we decided what, what was strategic for us and challenge-based learning is one of the methodologies that is strategic for us also within the ECIU because we are part of the ECIU. And so we created a, a bunch of initiatives that aim to bring together teachers and students should have a voice in this as well. So we produce guideline and res guidelines and resources for the teachers pedagogical training, we've been having huge numbers since uh, we launched the faculty development program in the, 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 end, the end of 2019, and we've been having around 4,000 participations of professors, which is quite remarkable. We also provide peer support, so professors, teachers who have more experience in using different types of methodologies will help their peers to do so as well. So that should be, should, they shouldn't be f uh, afraid of uh, making errors because it, it does happen. Uh, that's, that's regular, that's normal. We also bring together other, other um, professors with a higher level of experience from other institutions, one in Portugal, and we bring together the students, the learners as well, to help the professor change their uh, or transform their courses for, for a better purpose, uh, which is to engage the students and have them, them committed. We also have a peer observation uh, program. Again, uh, the professors open the doors of their classes, which is quite uh, not so naturally done as it should be, and observe other lectures and, and give comments and reflect on that. We're also creating flexible learning spaces because if we want to do this student-centered approach, we need to have flexible learning spaces that allow for collaboration spaces and more individual approaches. Uh, we also reward uh, and, uh, and give prizes, money to professors who want to do new things in teaching and learning. And we also, and most importantly to this, uh, created communities of practice. And in fact, communities of practice, what they do is that they bring together those who share the same interests, right? So if I'm a teacher and I want to do CBL, I will join this community, CBL community, and I will learn from others on how to do it. And they will share resources which they have prepared uh, previously. And we have on, uh, on, uh, live ongoing discussions on this. So, um, in fact, we are social creatures, right? So sharing is what we do for a living. Um, and it's, it's, of course, critical also in this respect. As I was saying, teaching is often a solitary task. Learning should be a social experience, not only for the students, but also for the teachers. And at work, many studies show 
very um, positive effects on sharing and connecting with others. And of course, if we have teachers more motivated uh, with a higher levels of well-being and so on, and feeling that they belong to a community, then of course the, the, the experience of their students will also be improved. So um, sharing knowledge, experiences and resources is, is vital to create a sustainable community of practice, and it's very important that we in our institutions launch this uh, local, face-to-face, -face, preferably communities of practice, because this type of bonding requires this face-to-face um, -face approach. And we also uh, want to foster this, uh, this uh, val the value of sharing among disciplines, uh, and also connect teachers with more or less expertise in uh, using different uh, methods. So this brings me to our project, Erasmus project. So um, we are coordinating this project, but it's, it's a project with, uh, uh, that involves different ECIU universities, one from Germany. Um, and it's, it's going to be adopted by the whole uh, ECIU University. And COLLAB stands for Collaborative Platform of Teaching Innovation in Higher Education. So the idea is that from the local communities within our institutions, we go to a digital hub where teachers should be comfortable, they should trust those uh, involved in the, in the platform, who come to the platform, um, and they should share resources, uh, questions, uh, answers, discussions, and so on. So the idea in the project was that we would first understand which, which were the innovations in learning and teaching to bring them to the platform, and then try to understand what, what, what were the needs of the potential users. So ha after having done this, we would then inform the, the, um, the platform, what the platform should, should be about and what, what, how it should look like. So the idea is that we have professors with different levels of expertise. They are all wel welcome. It's supposed to be a secure uh, environment. Um, and we, we have two types of approaches. We have hubs which are uh, curated, content curated, and we have groups that can be created from a bottom-up perspective. We are focusing first in two hubs because they are strategic for the ECIU, uh, the CBL, the challenge-based hub, challenge-based learning hub, so on how to implement resources, discussion, questions and answers on how to implement a CBL approach, methodology. And we also want to go ahead with something else which we believe is very relevant in this respect because it brings together innovation in learning and teaching and internationalization, opening the borders again, which is COIL. It's, that stands for Collaborative Online International Learning. So the idea is that teachers from different countries uh, will bring together the students in their courses for usually less, at least a, a, a one month, four weeks, so four to, to eight weeks. And they will be working together uh, for a specific purpose. So the idea is that not only we open the borders uh, of our uh, classes, but also that we may innovate together. And this will also, we believe, bring um, foster mobility, because as you know, mobility is an important part of this to create the social bonds. We need to trust each other, because in the end, it, that's what we are talking about when we talk about sharing and the value of sharing. So we will have two hubs to start with, uh, one in CBL, one in COIL. As I was saying, we will try to understand which are the scientific uh, areas and interests of the ones coming to the hub, and we'll get them in contact. Uh, so 
um, different people might be interested in, in different hubs. And also, it might be that a community, a local community of practice that already exists, wants to create a hub, and they are welcome to do so, of course. Um, and so this is an example of Mary and, Joy, oh, and John, sorry, interested, both interested in, in CBL, uh, and Mary creating uh, a CBL group, CBL in biology, in teaching biology, and then afterwards, because Mary uh, mentions she is interested in gamification, or someone mentions she is, inter is interested in gamification in COIL, then Mary will, will join this. So the idea is that, again, depending on the interests of the users of the platform, we will get them together and build this uh, community of practice that trusts and share and connect with each other. Preferentially, they will also uh, be involved in events where they can meet uh, in person. So uh, the good news is that uh, the, the, um, the platform will be launched in February, 10th of, of February 2022. You are all welcome to join. As I was saying, we will share resources, guidelines, discussions will be going on. Uh, we will share materials, we will have events, we will inform on different types of things going on to improve our teaching and learning. Uh, this is the CoLab team, so those are the faces of whom you should trust because they will be behind the platform supporting the, the users. Um, we know it's difficult to create a sustainable community. People will need to come and want to stay. And that's what this team is, be, uh, is, is working on, that you come and, and stay, that we all uh, improve teaching and learning in our institutions and in Europe in overall. So thank you. Um, and I'll be open to questions. Thanks a lot, Sandra. For into that um, very complex project, I must say. So it's quite elaborate and all the different levels you'll have to pull there. Also really love that you have proactive moderation in there to sort of sustain the network. I think that's always really important to have people who actually take care of um, the relations in a network. Yes. Um, on a continuous basis, so that may be a first question. The team is actually there on a permanent basis. Yes. So they're there the to team, stay. The team involved in the hubs. Mm -hmm. uh, they are permanently there, but anyone is free to create new hubs as long as there are people taking care of the hubs because it's curated materials. And everyone is, is um, invited to create groups um, uh, for whatever purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, I opened um, with a reference to a talk yesterday by Dara Melnick, uh, because the topics are quite closely related. She's actually here in the audience and posted a question, so um, that's the perfect um, full circle here. She asks, we talk about new technologies a lot. What are some of the old technologies that we should keep? Are you talking about this platform in particular? Overall. Well, um, I, I, I think the, the old is not a, a, a bad thing uh, in this respect. I think it's whatever tool uh, is, is, uh, make, makes the goal possible. And the goal here is to try to connect uh, teachers from, uh, from all over the world. Uh, then, then it's fine. This is uh, a platform which we have, or a technology which we have uh, implemented at the University of Aveiro for a long time. Um, it, it's, it builds on a, um, a cooperation we have with a company, a telecommunication company in Portugal. So it has been proved to be uh, useful, namely for teachers in secondary schools. So, so that's the reason why. It's not a new platform. Uh, and that's the reason why, uh, because we have evidence that it's been working uh, and serves the purpose. That's the reason why we adopted this one. Mm -hmm. Then um, a question by Miriam Specht in the audience, in the chat. How do they ensure that people feel related and seen? Can you give us some example from your experience of practice? Well, when you register, uh, we ask about the specific interests and the scientific area. So and what we do is that we try to run algorithms to make it um, uh, available to everyone that 
person A as an interest in uh, matter B or whatsoever. So you also right? really depend on like any network on a large number of participants for that AI to yes, make Yes, but, but then again, we have the moderators who can also uh, build up on this uh, potential connections. Which is also a great combination, I guess, of an automated um, approach as well as an, an analog um, curated approach by humans. Um, Leah Sharp asks, could you please provide a link where we can learn more and potentially join? I'm not sure, was it on your last slide, that link? Not yet. No, no it's, it's you not. You know what we'll do, especially? What, what, what yeah. we will do soon, very ah. soon, because everything is ready to send the save the date information on the platform, is that everyone will receive uh, information on this, namely in Germany. Did you share the save the date link in your slide? No, I no? did not. Maybe we but can, can just share it in the chat afterwards. Yes. We'll keep the chat open for yes. two minutes longer, as we always do, and then we'll share the link there. Yes. Um, last question by Armin. What are the lessons learned of ECIU, e ECIU for instilling such a European network with life? Is there a standard form of support on the administration level in each partner university? Well, it's a complex project. We're 12 um, universities, so as you can imagine, it's a, it's a big project. But again, it, it's it, it, it is built upon trust. So we were uh, around for many years before we went for the, this uh, European initiative, which I think is, is, is key here. And we have a, a board which makes the high level decisions and then we organize in different groups and everything is uh, rolling up. Uh, but, but it's complex, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting question that also came up yesterday with Professor Bustamante, who launched a very big network with a lot of um, South American partners, also mm -hmm. private-public partnerships. And you really stressed how important it is that everybody very clearly knows what the goal is and is in aligned. Yes. You said, I think, 30 years of experience there. So yeah. uh, maybe you could share how not to do it. Was, what was one <laughs> or the other learning you had there? Well, I, th I think, again, if we're talking about um, the importance of sharing and connecting, I think uh, we should not, um, we, should, we, sh we should be attentive on what decisions we made in terms of the, the way we connect. I still believe uh, that it, it's very important to be face to face with uh, others. That's why I'm here, because I'm visiting Hamburg. Uh, and that's why I came to Berlin, also because it was a pleasure to be here, of course. But uh, it's, it's very easy with such a complex project to, to not communicate. Uh, it's so many people involved, so it's very important that we create a structure for that to happen in a routine basis and frequently, right? Frequently uh, in a routine, yes. ritualized, so to say. Like a, I always like to compare this, uh, like a constant heartbeat that makes sure yeah. um, the project stays alive and everybody's yeah. on board. Um, thanks a lot, Sandra, for joining it's us. My pleasure. Um, it's been great having you here on stage. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So,